<laughs> Imagine that, huh? British Rail on time. No, Jim is just coming. Ten pounds, Jim. You cannot make the return journey in ten minutes. You might as well pay up now. That car's running like a dream. The road holding's so good, I only have to use the brakes at that tight right-hander just before the A3. Oh, darling, do be careful. You've already had enough to get breathalyzed. <laughs> darling, the last time they gave me the bag to blow in, I played Amazing Grace and got off. Are you ready? Right. Go. He's on his way. No brakes. No chance. Hello. And welcome to a fast start whodunit. And to our resident panelists, Miss Anushka Hempel and Mr. Patrick Mower, whose brilliant deductive power solved last week's crime. Try, and, okay. try to do it again, Patrick. You try. <laughs> Challenging them, we have the lovely Mr. Alfred Marx, who did very well last time he was a guest. He couldn't solve the crime, but he did get a lot of laughs. And distracting him, the even lovelier Amy MacDonald. <laughs> uh, welcome also to our studio panel. And there they are. So if you're ready at home with pencil and paper, you'll see all the clues and the red herrings to help you solve this week's crime as we rejoin the plot to investigate a racing driver's final drive. And remember, only murderers are allowed to lie. Feeling a bit better now, Mrs. Baxter? Yes, thank you. It was such a shock. We were having a dinner party. It was his birthday. But he was travelling away from the house. Yes, he was coming to collect me from the station. When he didn't show, I got a taxi. And you are? Duval, Jack Duval, his partner. We run the racing company together. Oh, yes. I follow the sport a bit myself. Saloon car racing. You're John Pierce, a works driver, aren't you, sir? I was, yes. Was? Mr. Baxter had just dropped me from the team. Not now, Mr. Pierce. You can air your grievances some other time. Are you a relation, sir? No, I am Alex Swabe, a friend of Mr. and Mrs. Baxter. Uh, Mrs. Baxter, you must I teach him. We met in Switzerland last year. I'm afraid Roger does not like me very much. Of course he does, Alex. He's upset. He doesn't know what he's saying. For God's sake, how old do I have to be to know what I'm saying? Nobody ever thinks I know what's going on. Well, of course you do, sir. But what you probably don't know is that this is more than just a routine road accident. What do you mean? The brake pipe had been cut through. But that's murder. Precisely, sir. Maybe the intention wasn't murder. Someone may have had a grudge, wanted to give him a scare. But whoever cut through that pipe killed Mr. Baxter. Sergeant. Gee, excuse me for a moment. I found this in a toolbox. There's a trace of brake fluid on the blade. Any prints? <clears throat> um, probably mine. I gave Jim that box of tools for his birthday. I had them sent down here yesterday, and I packed them all myself with some care. I see. So in theory, sir, you could have been the last person to use it. Oh, no, I wasn't here. I, I telephoned earlier to say I couldn't use the car and I'd be down by train. As that was why they had their damn silly bet. A bet, Mrs. Baxter? Yes, it was about two hours ago when Jack first phoned from his home. 
seen you on the way like this. Oh, my is a tree. Hello? Well, hello, Jack. Yes, it's right here. Jack, where the hell are you? Don't tell me you can't make my birthday party. What? <laughs> Your chauffeur's pranked the car. Well, you'll just have to use the trains. Look, I tell you what, I've just put the car away, but I'd love to show you what a difference the new inlet and carbs have made. I'll pick you up. <laughs> I've got the house to the station down to four and a half minutes. What? Oh, by the way, thanks for that box of tools. They're great. A tenor I can't get to the station, pick you up and be back here in under ten minutes. You're on, mate. <laughs> Phone me when you get there. There's a train dead on seven. See you. Bye. So the bet was why Mr. Baxter was in such a hurry? Yes, it was partly my fault. Rubbish. If no one else had suggested it, he'd have suggested it himself. If he hadn't bought it today, ten to one he'd have killed himself racing. Unless I'm mistaken, I read that after the crash he had at Brand's Hatch, Mr. Baxter had retired. He had. But he was going to race in my place this season. It wasn't my fault I wasn't winning, it was a damn car. Please forgive my husband. We didn't know he'd been dropped until we came here this evening. It was rather unpleasant. Was there a row about it then? <laughs> I'll say. Baxter, my stepfather, had had a few drinks. And, well, he never was a very subtle man. That happened just after the phone call. Of course, we'll have to deduct the time it takes me to get from here to the car. A matter of seconds. The engine's only just been run in. I shouldn't push it too hard. Look, Pierce, if you'd pushed it a bit harder, you might have done better. As it is, ever since you got married, you got slower. Don't blame me. Blame the damn car. It's never been right since you insisted on putting in that new gearbox. You know what they say about a poor workman blaming his tools? I've done my damn best, and you know it. Then your damn best isn't good enough, is it? And what's more, it never has been. You just haven't got that extra something it takes. Jim, darling, don't talk cars. It's your birthday. Yes, happy birthday, stepfather. Don't you talk to me in that tone of voice. I can use whatever tone I like. I don't work for you, so I don't have to worry about my job. No, and you won't be working for me either. Thought of having you around the works to give me indigestion. More likely the gin. You should try some tonic with it. Not that it matters now you've given up racing. Well, I haven't given up racing. I'm racing again, this season. Look, my hands are steady as ever. What car will you be driving? The car your husband couldn't make go fast enough. Jack Duval thinks I drive fast enough. Jack Duval's got 49% of the shares. My 51 says you're not driving. With no bloody ice. That's it, isn't it? Come on, let's go. Oh, don't go, please. He's had a few. He'll calm down. <laughs> Why don't you go for a walk in the garden? It's a lovely evening. I'll talk to Jim. Yes, all right. Thank you. Roger, if you don't stop needling Jim, you can find somewhere else to live. <laughs> if he finds out about you and Alex, You'll be looking for somewhere else to live. I ought to give you a good beating. Go on, then. And when my stepfather wants to know what happened and why, I'll tell him. So go on. Get it out of your German system. It is my Swiss system, and one day I will. And where are the piercers? I've gone for a walk in the garden. I'm going upstairs to change. I hope I'm not supposed to change. I don't suppose you'll ever change. You could wash your hands before dinner, though. I was working on my motorbike. That was this morning. There's a tin of instant removal in the garage. Use that. Yes, go on, dear. And I've put a clean shirt out for you on your bed. It's not easy being a teenager. 
It's not easy being 55. Six, darling. Not until midnight. You know, I never thought I'd live to be 56. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Who Done It. I wonder if our paddle have any idea as yet who tampered with the late Jim Baxter's brake pipe. Was it his stepson, Roger? A very aggressive young man. Or the dead man's business partner, Jack Duval, who alleges that he arrived by train and was waiting for Baxter to pick him up. Or the handsome ski instructor, Alex, who appears to be more than a good friend of the family. Or was it the sacked works driver, Pierce, for he certainly had a grudge. Well, you've still got a chance to solve the puzzle, but remember, Remember what the sergeant said. Maybe murder wasn't the intention. Perhaps someone just wanted to scare Jim Baxter and the plan went wrong. But still the question is, who done it? And I'll give you a clue off the cuff. Macbeth. Out, out. Damn spot. So you went into the garage, sir, to clean your hands? Yes. And you didn't touch a toolbox? No. No, I didn't open the toolbox, take out the hacksaw and cut through the brake pipe. But you did open the toolbox and I saw you. Perhaps you could expand on that statement, sir. Well, I was just having a look after cleaning my hands. Hello, Roger. Hello. Just cleaning my hands. I'm just showing Barbara around the estate. Fine. Help yourself. I'm going to put a clean shirt on. Please, my mother. <laughs> so that left you two in the garage? Yes. I wanted to see Jim's birthday present. I presume this is the famous birthday present. Yes. A crate of gin would have been better. He doesn't deserve anything treating you like that. But you know Jack Duval likes you. He'll talk Jim round. Jim backs as the boss. You think he means it? What, that he'll drive instead of me? He means it. And he will, barring accident. Shall we quit now? I would, but Audrey's being so nice and I don't want to cause a scene. Look, what we'll do is we'll have dinner and then we'll tell Jim goodbye, happy birthday, and get knotted, okay? <laughs> when you were in the garage, was the hacksaw blade in or out? Out. And you stayed in the house after this? Yes, we came in here and we found Alex, Roger and Mrs. Baxter. And we stayed here drinking until Mr. Baxter came downstairs, ran outside and got into the car. As I understand it, the car was in the garage when you left. Who got it out? Mr. Baxter? Uh, no, I remember now. It was, was I got it out. Mr. Baxter was changing. He wanted the engine warmed up, so he asked me to do it. So you were all in here until Mr. Baxter left? Except me, of course. I was waiting at the station. Oh, yes, sir. Except you. You were at the station. You say he asked you to get it out, sir? Oh, no, I remember now. He... Well, it's nearly seven. I hope Jim is breaking the record for tying a bow tie. He should have started to dress ages ago. He's always rushing. Hmm. Jim, it's nearly ten to seven. Would you like me to get the car out for you? Sorry. The key's in it. Drive carefully. <laughs> Oh, by the way, sir, did you use a footbrake when you drove out of the garage? 
Uh, no, I did not. Thank you, sir. You've helped me a lot. Now, Mr. Deval, how long will it take someone to cut through a brake feed pipe? Well, it depends, uh, well, in a few seconds, but I can't believe anyone here would do that. Everybody here did have something to gain. As I understand it, you would have employed Mr. Pierce if Mr. Baxter hadn't been so insistent on dismissing him. Yes, that's true. And I understand Mr. Goodwin has a gift for design, but his stepfather wouldn't help him. I'm sure Mr. Duval will help him. Yes, of course I will, Audrey, you know that. May I ask if anyone knows the contents of Mr. Baxter's will? His shares in the company come to me, of course. Everything does. I'm sorry to ask, but it could be important. Could I have a hacksaw, please, Constable? Now, Mr. Duval, are you sure that this is the hacksaw that was part of the kit? Yes. Well, it's exactly the same type, yes. And when you packed the tool, sir, with some care, was the blade in or out? I was out. I'd ordered several different grades of blade. Whoever uses the saw selects the blade for the job. Of course. Well, that's all. Could I have the other vital exhibit, please, Constable? Vital exhibit. Oh, yes, sir, vital. Reminds me of a lady in Shakespeare's play, the one with the three witches in. Which one was that, Constable? Macbeth, sir. That's our modern recruit. Educated. Yes, a poor lady couldn't get rid of the spot on her hands. Synonymous with guilt, of course. Didn't have removal gel in those days, you see. But everybody's hands here appear to be clean. <laughs> Well, Sergeant Channing seems to know who's done the dirty deed, all right. But whilst our resident panel and our guests puzzle it out, let's welcome the suspects. <laughs> right, panel, before you cross-examine the suspects, you are allowed to ask for an instant replay of any of the action that you've seen so far. So, Amy, let's start with you. What would you like to see again? Ah, uh, um, I'd like to see the conversation uh, or rather the argument between Roger and his stepfather. Conversation between Roger and the stepfather. Yes. And so you shall. Please. Alfred. Yes, I, I would like to see the, the bit where the Pierces, is it? Yes, the Pierces inspect the toolbox in the garage. I think that's the second time one sees the toolbox open. The Pierces, the tool kit. Right. Anushka? Yes, I'd like to see the first time the toolbox is open. I think when Roger's in the garage with the Pierces. The first time. When Roger Two bucks a scene. Yeah. Right. Patrick. Uh, yes, I'd like to see uh, at the top of the play when Jim is speaking to Jack on the telephone about the time it takes to get from A to B. Jack on the telephone, yes. Duval. Thank you very much, Patrick. Right, whilst we find those, let's have one question from each of you. May I remind you, only the guilty party is allowed to lie. So, Amy, mm. a question, please. Oh, they all look pretty guilty to me, actually. <laughs> but I'd like to ask Roger what he meant when he said to um, Mrs. Baxter and Alex Schwalbe? Yes. Um, you said to them, when Father finds out what happened and why, what, what exactly did you mean by that? When Father finds out that they were having an affair. It was quite obvious. Everybody else realised it, except my stepfather, I think. And why, though? They and why? Yes, you said what happened and why. I don't remember saying that, actually. I mean, uh, and why everything is, you know, as it is, with the relationship between you two. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Alfred? Well, before I, make, before I ask a question, I'd like to make an observation. Of course. That is one of the earliest bits of dialogue <coughs> in the scene was that the, the, the victim who said uh, that terrible joke about um, the only time I was asked to blow a bag was... Uh, you know, Amazing Grace. Personally, I'm not sorry he's dead. <laughs> my, my question, really... I'm not surprised he's dead, either. My next question, and then I've died of the Hackney Empire with better jokes than that. Uh, yes. My question now is to uh, Mr Pierce. Uh, why exactly were you dropped from the racing team, please? Well, <clears throat> we'd been having a lot of trouble with a new clutch which had been developed. Um, 
by Mr. Javar's company. Um, I didn't agree with putting it into the car. Uh, Mr. Baxter insisted that it should be put in the car. And consequently, the linkage, the hydropneumatic linkage was not good enough and was not driving the car with enough torque and power. Do you understand that now? Yeah, I wonder why you were dropped. Why were well, because Mr. Baxter thought I was racing badly. I, I told see. him it was It was the fourth the of the new car gearbox. Box. I see. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bad workmen blaming their tools. Right. Yeah. Anushka. Yes, I'd like to ask Mr. Duval um, about his shares in the company. He has, you have 49% shares. That's right. 49% yeah. of the shares. Um, if Jim Baxter died, would you automatically, through some previous agreement, take over all the shares in the company? Or Not at all. His percent um, would go to his wife. Went to his wife. Yeah. And so she would, she would, yes. Thank you very much. Happy? Yes. Do you want to expand on that? <laughs> no, no, not at the moment. Right, Patrick, one Patrick question. On. Well, I'd just like to put the, the, the facts straight. First of all, Amy, uh, being a policeman, you see, what Roger actually said was, when my stepfather finds out what happened and why, I'll tell him. Those are the exact words. Um, sorry, I'd, uh, <laughs> I'd like to ask um, Audrey a question. Look, turn we the need to ask for a playback, really. We can just get Patrick to do the whole <laughs> thing for us. <laughs> um, Audrey, you look terribly upset. I'd just like to ask you, um, when your husband uh, made this bet, um, and when he eventually went off driving up the road, he'd had quite a lot to drink, hadn't he? Yes. Didn't you think it was rather unwise to go off in a sports car? You know, did, weren't you at all concerned of the fact that he was... Well, of course, but um, I, I did, in fact, tell him to be careful, but Jim does this all the time. He did do this all the time. Yes. He would always go... Uh, you know, drinking was one of his problems. Yes. It's one of the reasons we persuaded him to stop in the first place. Mm. But, he was but there were other that. men in the house, weren't there? I mean, in fact, you had a, ra a real racing driver with you who, was, um, who might have gone, you know, instead. It, it, was, it would be impossible to persuade Jim not to do it himself. It, you, bragging was one of his things. He loved to show off with his car. Yes. Well, I'm sure you did your best to stop it. I did, yes. Right, thank you very much indeed. We're ready now for the first playback. And the first playback is Patrick's. He would like to see where Jim was on the phone to Duval or talking about the £10 bet for the race to the station. Here it is. What? Oh, by the way, thanks for that box of tools. They're great. A tenor I can't get to the station, pick you up and be back here in under ten minutes. You're on, mate. <laughs> Phone me when you get there. There's a train dead on seven. See you. Bye. There. Yeah. It takes 14 hours that, and then three and a half minutes to get from A to Z. Uh, yes, that's fine. Thank you. I, I've got that all worked out. I don't want to give anything away. I'd just like to ask the policeman a question, if I may. You may. Um, One question. I'll ask the sergeant. Um, it, it was purely a uh, coincidence that you were waiting in, uh, on the side of the road, was it? Did you often wait there? for? We often wait there, yes, we do. That's one of your traps. It's a very dangerous. No, it's not a trap, exactly. You should know better than that yourself. <laughs> you were just waiting there uh, in case anybody happened to go speeding by. Is that what you were waiting? You were waiting for speedsters, were you, more than anything we else? We were on patrol. We often wait in that lay by. It happens to be a dangerous corner. It's also before the A3. Yeah, so there, are there quite a few accidents there, in fact? There hasn't been an accident there in the last nine months. Thank oh. you very much indeed, Sergeant. Thank you. We are now ready for the next replay, uh, which is uh, Amy's one, which he, she wants to see uh, Roger talking back to the stepfather about his job and his birthday. There it is. It's your birthday. Yes. Happy birthday, stepfather. Don't you talk to me in that tone of voice. I can use whatever tone I like. I don't work for you, so I don't have to worry about my job. No, and you won't be working for me either. Thought of having you around the works to give me indigestion. More likely the gin. You should try some tonic with it. Not that it matters now you've given up racing. Well, I haven't given up racing. Mm. Mm. Hmm. Can I ask another question? Now? Of course you can. Oh, super. In fact, I've got two. Good. How's um. it going? So are most people. <laughs> <laughs> two grudges against your father. Is this true? I feel very sorry for my... I, I did feel very sorry, sorry for my stepfather. 
the fact that he was so ignorant about the relationship of Alex Schwabe and my mother, and and the fact that he wouldn't he wouldn't recognise my ability for design. Yes, and you obviously don't like um, Mr. Schwabe. No. No. Can I ask Mr. Schwabe something? Yes. Um, when you drove the car that little way, you know, from the garage to the house, you definitely put on the handbrake, didn't you? Yes, you had in the playback just then. I did. Yes. I want to know why you didn't use the foot brake. Well, it was having a little trouble with the clutch revving the engine. It was cold. I had to warm it up, you know, with the clutch. To only have two feet, huh? <laughs> you know a lot about cars, do you? No, I know not very much. Yeah, he knows You're used to driving the other side of the road, you know? That was the other way around. <laughs> They are not. <laughs> <laughs> that is how little I know about cars. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Herr Schwabe spends most of his time on the snow, in snowshoes. Monsieur Schwabe. Herr Schwabe. No, Monsieur. Monsieur. Oui. So you're French, Swiss. Where I come from. <laughs> Good. Sorry. All right. Any more questions, please? Uh, yes, I'd like to ask uh, Mr. Jack Duval. Um, when you uh, phoned from the station, you in fact, um, no, uh, well, you didn't phone from the station, did you? And that's yes, I, I did. Yes. Ah, now what I want to ask you is, why didn't you phone from the station when you when the, the car didn't turn up to collect you? But why should I? Well, I mean, if you, you, you knew there was a race going on, you knew the guy was coming down. That's right, I, exactly. So I wouldn't it be a normal practice for you if you were expecting somebody to pick you up to, and they didn't turn up to phone and say, are you coming, have I won the bet or, or not? Not at all, I'd won the bet. I uh, wanted him to arrive there and find me not there, gone. Ah, so how long, did, in fact, did you wait before I you waited uh, just over four and a half minutes. So four what time would that be? Minutes. What time would that be? Well, the train got in at uh, one minute past seven. Uh, it was... Just, Could just I come just out ask six the, minutes uh, past. Uh, the constable a question? In fact, we heard in the evidence that the train arrived on time. Is that not correct? As far as I can remember, sir, yes. It, it was said, in fact, stated by someone. I can't remember. Who can you remember, Nuska? It no, was I stated that the train arrived at 7. I think right, I can yeah. clarify that for you. Yes, uh, please do, sir. We have the train leaving Waterloo at 18.26, due to arrive at Guildford at 9.01. But, in fact... 19.01. At uh, 19.01, I beg your pardon. Uh, but in fact, did arrive dead on time. Ah, and this was an oversight on your behalf, Mr. Duval, that you thought it was one minute late. No, but I, I, I would have thought if you were if you if there was a bet going on, you would have known the exact time, surely. Oh, but the exact time of the train or its train's arrival was immaterial, because I phoned when the train had arrived and took my timing from the end of the phone call because I was on the phone when he left. Thank you very much indeed. There I must stop you because we're nearly ready now for the next uh, playback. The next is Anushka's playback. Uh, she'd like to see Roger with the toolbox just before the pierces enter the garage. Hello, Roger. Hello. Just cleaning my hands. I'm just showing Barbara around the estate. Fine. Help yourself. I'm going to put a clean shirt on. Please, my mother. <laughs> so that left you two in the garage? Yeah. <laughs> um, I want to ask you a question, Roger. When you opened the toolbox um, and you saw the... Did you see the hacksaw on the side of the, the lid when you opened it? Yes, I think so. I noticed the hacksaw, yes. You did. Did you notice um, whether the blade of the hacksaw was in or not at the time? It was out, actually. It was out. Hmm. And why did you close the lid of the box when the others came in, sort of, so quickly and slightly superstitiously? No reason particular. I mean, I just saw them coming in and... Uh, Automatically closed it, because you shouldn't quite. have been sort of fiddling about in there, really. Yes. Right. Um, may I ask Mr. Pierce a question now? Um, through the questioning, I think, with Constable Channing, uh, Sergeant. Sorry, oh, sorry Sergeant. Um, Constable Ward. When you were asked, when you opened the toolbox and was the hacksaw missing, you automatically you said no, the hacksaw... I didn't open the toolbox. My wife did. Your wife did. All right, then when your wife opened the toolbox, did you notice whether the hacksaw was in there all right? More to no. the point, 
Because I, I couldn't actually see the toolbox. But I presumed it was out because it was a new toolbox, and you do not pack hacksaws in new toolboxes with a blade in. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Uh, now we're ready for the last playback, which is Alfred's. He would like to see where the uh, toolkit box was open with the pierces in the garage after Roger has left. I'd like to see Jim's birthday present. I presume this is the famous birthday present. Yes. A crate of gin would have been better. He doesn't deserve anything treating you like that. But you know Jack Duval likes you. He'll talk Jim round. Jim backs as the boss. You think he means it? What, that he'll drive instead of me? <coughs> yes, Alfred. That's told me absolutely nothing. <laughs> um, I'd like to ask Roger a question. Roger, um, this is the garage of a racing car driver. Are there no other hacksaws in the garage? Well, it's not actually the garage he uses all the time. I mean, this is our home garage. Yes, even in a home garage, a man who's, who's connected with the motor industry usually has uh, a lot of tools. I mean, I'm only an actor and I've got millions of tools in my garage. Oh. None of them work. <laughs> uh, are there any other hacksaws in the garage? I've no idea at all. Don't you work on your motorbike? Did you say you had a motorbike? Yes, what would I use a hacksaw for? To, to, what do you use a hacksaw for? On my motorbike. To, 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 to cut off the corners. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's put me in my place, that's isn't the it? Saw, that's the saw a little bit off the end of the exhaust pipe. Only if he was Jewish. That's yeah. right. <laughs> don't say I don't feed you, right? Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very indeed. much indeed. Open up questions, please. Uh, okay. like, could I, sorry, can I just ask um, uh, Barbara a, a question? Um, uh, and really, both of you. Um, did you came, you were invited to dinner at the house, were you? Yes. So you came changed? Yes. And uh, what time did you arrive, actually? just before the first phone call. Mm. Thank you very much indeed. There I must stop you. Oh. Thank you. The time is now up. I'd like you to finish filling in your cards, if you will, I now, have please. one more question, very important. Well, I'm sorry, we haven't got right. time Can for it. Can we put our names on here? Yes, please. Now, this applies to our audience panel as well. Don't forget to put your name on the back because you could be the winner of our Who Done It trophy. Right, time's up. I'm now going to collect the cards. Thank you, Amy. Oh, my God. <laughs> Anushka. I can't print. Thank you. Oh, it's spell. beautiful. Is it, is it in Cantonese? Shh. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> right. Now, before I ask the panel who did it, let's see if we've got a winner from our studio audience. No. 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 Yes. Ooh. Oh. We have. And it is Mr. P.M. Larkin uh, from Bushy in Watford. <laughs> so, panel, let's find out from you who you thought done it. Amy MacDonald, who done it and why? Well, I wanted to ask the sergeant... Now Doesn't matter what you wanted to ask. <laughs> Just tell us who done it and why. But that would have helped me terribly. Anyway, never mind. I still think it was uh, Duval with help from Mr. Schwabe. I see. And why I did think, you think that? Well, because I think he wasn't at the station at all, in fact, you know. I oh. think Yes, I think he was sort of waiting somewhere else. He nipped in when there was nobody in the garage. Yes. Because I thought, how strange for someone to send a racing driver a bag of tools anyway. Did you really? Yes. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, don't you think that's odd? I do. And I think it's very peculiar. Yeah. And then I think, you see, because he wanted Pierce to, um, to, to do the race. Yes. And also, if, uh, of course, Mr. Schwabe wanted Mr. Baxter's wife, didn't he? I mean, that was obvious. He did indeed, yes. But Thank you very much, that, I think uh, I think we've got the message. <laughs> Alfred Marx, who done it and why? My first instinct was to go for Schwabi because, first of all, I don't think he's Swiss at all. I think he's German. I think, in fact, he's Martin Bormer with a clever makeup. <laughs> I was going to ask him about coffee, but I didn't get round to it. Then I, I went off that. But I, I, I suspect strongly that it's of the Pierces, John and Barbara Pierce, perhaps in collusion with his wife, certainly John Pierce. Uh, uh, the motive, well, um, 
um, disappointment and um, a clue. Needle, needle. The clue was the cuffs, the spot. Nobody could possibly saw through that pipe without getting oil or grease on their hands. And uh, I noticed that uh, we made a great show of seeing those frilly cuffs Thank you until very much we saw the interrogation. Then there were no cuffs. Thank you very much. Anushka, who done it? Well, yeah. I think it was Alex Schwalbe because um, he knew that all the others were in cahoots to tamper with the brakes or something in the car to upset the whole apple cart to get rid of Jim Baxter mm -hmm. for, the, for the race, probably because of um, Mr. Pierce wanting to drive. I think he was the last person to get to the car and when he opened the box, he was the only person when he opened the box, the blade was back in the lip back in the hacksaw mm -hmm. inside the box. So you when think he lifted Alex it. So I think he took the blade out, did it, and then put the blade back in again Thank and you very much all the others indeed. to get the blame. Thank you. Oh, Patrick see. Mower. So that's it, eh? I, well, I oh, think okay. also that it was John and Barbara Pierce, mm -hmm. because uh, they may not have been uh, a murder. They just wanted to mutilate the guy so that he could get back to being a racing driver. He did tell a lie to the policeman, and he, he covered up when interrogated but uh, I don't really believe him. He's got lots of motives. And also, Barbara was missing when, uh, before Jim left on his really hectic drive when he was drunk, and she was probably cleaning herself up after the crime. And also, the blade, much, Ale the blade, when Alex looked in the thing, the blade was back in the box. Thank you very much indeed. Put back. Thank you. So, stand by for now, the big, exciting moment. Are you ready? Right. Will the real, who done it? Stand up, please. Was a very, that was very good indeed. Patrick, you were certainly on the right track there. In fact, you got it right. You did have the answer right, but your clues weren't as correct as Alfred Marx's. And Alfred puts a John Pierce, perhaps in collusion with Mrs. Pierce, impossible to have sawn through the pipe without getting oil or grease on his hands or sleeve. John Pierce had removed his shirt cuffs after the accident. I love you, John. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's a PS to you. Thank you very much indeed. So I think Alfred must be the winner, although Patrick, you got it right. Well done, Certainly. the two of you. <laughs> yes, it, it was the Pierces. Mrs. Pierce, of course, being an accessory. They only intended to stop him racing, but instead of a broken arm, he broke his neck. The clues? Well, when the Pierces went into the garage, that scene was all lies. But did you notice their conflicting stories? As we saw, only Mrs. Pierce looked into the toolbox and saw the blade was out. But her husband, uh, when questioned, also said that it was missing. Now, how could he have known? Well, did you notice after his visit to the garage, his nice white cuffs disappeared? You see, he got them dirty using the saw. You should also have noticed that he forgot to put the cleaning rag back on the top of the tin. Now, I'd give, give you a clue, you know. Off the cuff. Out, out, damn spot. Did you get it? Well, if you didn't, you've got another chance next week when the lead singer of a pop group shoots the stardom in an unexpected way. So it's goodbye from our panel and from me. Oh, one last thing, uh, if you drink and drive, make sure it's on a golf course. <laughs> Good night. <laughs> <laughs>